I've never been to an Ikea where I see so many people watching videos on their phone, taking naps, just resting. Even a Starbucks doesn't let you do that. This city is so dense that people literally come to Ikea just to take a break from the city. We have around 7 to 7.5 million people in Hong Kong and we are all squeezed. Hong Kong is the world's most expensive city to, well, rest your head and sleep at night. This studio apartment will cost you $1 million. Look around and you'll see that it's one of the most densely populated areas in the world. I mean, this city is so dense. Look at what McDonald's has come up with as a way to save space Inside, they put some of their kiosks outside. They even have what's called this mini hotel, which is basically just a bed and a shower. This cost me $80 a night. And sometimes demand is so high, I even saw this room listed for $316. Apartments are very small, like comparing to like even like Singapore, like for example, and many of the big cities in the world. In California, it's expensive, but you get value and get land. Hong Kong, before this economic downturn, average housing prices is still 15,000 Hong Kong per square foot, which is 2,000 USD per square foot. Hong Kong's housing prices are worse than Sydney, New York, and London. See, the average house in the US will cost you about five times annual household income. But in Hong Kong, the average home will cost 23 times household income. Normally, people can really afford to get a place in in Hong Kong because down payment, yeah, it's also could be a lot, you know. Most people do live with their parents. It's so hard to afford a home here for many that the city even became known for what are called cage homes. They're living spaces that are so tiny, they're basically like a cage for you to rest and that's about it. The situation has caused a crisis for the government, which is spending billions of dollars to solve a housing shortage. So much so that it has to spend billions of dollars basically turning ocean water into land. Hong Kong Disneyland was built entirely on reclaimed land. Usually, if you want a break in a big city, you go sit at a Starbucks or a park, but Hong Kong doesn't have too many parks, and Starbucks is very crowded. A lot of times, they even limit your Wi-Fi to 30 minutes. So why not just come to Ikea? So why did Ikea become a popular place for taking naps? And how did Hong Kong become the world's most expensive housing? It is really fascinating to see amidst all this density of buildings, you have two pretty huge basketball courts. I have to say, these are probably the most expensive basketball courts in the world when you think about the opportunity costs. If you look at the world's most expensive markets, it always comes down to low supply and high demand. So Singapore and Manhattan, New York are on the list. Both of them are islands. So you have very limited space to build homes, but now add high demand of people who want to live in those homes. And Hong Kong is the same, but even more extreme. See, Hong Kong is made up of islands, but on the islands are many hills, so it's really hard to build a home here. And demand is high because this place is unique. Next door, you have mainland China with 1.4 billion people. And remember, Hong Kong is its own special region of China. You can really see the contrast here. You have all of these skyscrapers behind me, and then over here, you have these crazy hills that you absolutely cannot build on. Hong Kong has its own currency, its own set of rules. It's a financial hub for Asia. So here you pay less taxes. It's easier to start a business. Even having a Hong Kong passport is great because it's one of the strongest in the world. So a huge demand with a low supply creates the world's most expensive housing market. And because land is so limited here, you better believe that when they do build, they're gonna build as high as they're able to to get as many units, as many homes as they possibly can in the building. And with pricey homes, you can bet it's hard to move out of your parents' home. People like they do live with their parents. If they probably meet their boyfriend or girlfriend and if they're gonna be together and get married one day, they're gonna like save up some money and then that money will go into their down payment. And when you hear something small, you probably can't imagine this small. So you end up having a lot of homes, a lot of really small homes, they even have what's called cage homes. Cage homes are these tiny places to sleep. They're about 55 square feet and cost around $300 a month. These homes have become largely criticized as a failure of the government to supply adequate housing to its people. Hong Kong itself, 30% of the economy is run by the top 
four wealthiest families here. So that's why, because the Hong Kong, the developers and also the person that's going to be your local supermarket tycoon are the same. He's referring to what's sometimes referred to as the four big families of Hong Kong, families who rose to prominence and became property tycoons of Hong Kong. Another way that Hong Kong has dealt with limited land is by, well, creating more land. They have to actually reclaim land to create more space to build buildings so people can actually have a home. Because so much of the land is just hills and not livable, more than one in four people in Hong Kong are living on land that is reclaimed. And a whopping 70% of commercial activities like retail and restaurants are on reclaimed land. All of this you're looking at used to just be water. But despite Hong Kong's housing crisis, things have changed in the past few years. Rent house prices did come down a little bit during COVID period. Hong Kong's housing prices fell to their lowest levels in five years. This was first triggered by protests over a controversial law, then accelerated by COVID with tens of thousands of people leaving Hong Kong for good. My rent itself, I used to live in a 375 square foot uh, studio apartment in Wan Chai, which is about the CBD area in Hong Kong. So it's gone down about 15%. And right now, because there's an exodus of expats, 133,000 in the last two years, we have the leverage because at the very end, whoever has cash is king right now. I know that right now there's like house, housing crisis in China as well. So, but then the Chinese people, they tend to bring a lot of money to Hong Kong to invest. So that I don't know if the house prices is going to come down a lot. Some people took advantage of uh, renegotiating their contracts, but it wasn't a big fluctuation. And I've been talking to a lot of people, there's an area, whether it's the mid-levels or in Discovery Bay, that was a lot of expats that uh, left or relocated. And uh, the landlords actually keep it uh, vacant rather than reduce necessarily big time the, the monthly rent. You know, you have the leverage to rent a lot of places because a lot of the expat that had packages coming over here for employment, they're all gone. So right now, the demand is low, supply is very high. This hotel cost me $240 a night. And the first thing I said is, actually, this is very spacious for Hong Kong. Uh, because I'm single, actually my parents helped me a little bit with the down payment. But as you can imagine, the, the housing, the apartments, uh, condos, they're very small here. There are a few silver linings to this housing story. See, because homes are so small here, the kitchens are tiny, sometimes non-existent. A lot of more flexibilities in terms of eating like, out choices. So these are a couple of things that probably how people try to cope, I think. Which means affordable restaurants are everywhere. You can choose to eat very cheaply, like, I don't know, three, four, five US dollars. So right now, the hottest restaurants are the ones that are four dollars, and you get to pick two of the items itself kind of like a Panda Express kind of buffet. And then there are others who just see the small home as an excuse to leave home. What's the mindset you have when you come to Hong Kong? Coming from North America, from Canada, uh, you have a lot of area, garden and all that. Then you come to Hong Kong and you realize, you know what, the, the, the typical shoebox. But it, it was a good reality check because you just realize what's the bare minimum you need on your day to day. And it actually allows you to explore more the city.